Like most things, numbers don't exist in a vacuum. They work together and are related to each other in many ways. One way numbers relate to each other is through common divisibility. In this lesson, we'll cover the concepts of multiples, factors, and remainders. Let's jump in. As the name implies, multiples are generated by multiplying two numbers together. A multiple of a number is the product of that number times any integer. For example, 4 times 3 equals 12, so 12 is a multiple of both 4 and 3. You might already be using multiples to make your job easier whenever you count up the change in your change jar. First, you might group pennies into stacks of 5. Then you would count how many stacks there are. In this case, they add up to 6. Then you'd multiply that number by 5. Your final count of pennies is a multiple of 5. It's often useful on the test to find multiples that two numbers share. These are called common multiples. Let's look at an example. If 6 times 4 equals 24, and 8 times 3 equals 24, then 24 is a common multiple of 6, 4, 8, and 3. This brings us to factors. A factor is an integer that evenly divides into the number in question. And a number that divides evenly with only the factors 1 and itself is called a prime number. Even apart from prime numbers, a number can only be divided evenly by certain other numbers. And this means that there is always a limited number of factors for any given number. Also, a number is divisible by any of its factors and is also a factor of all its multiples. Problems involving factors and other number properties are often conducive to the strategy of picking numbers. Remember, this strategy involves choosing numbers to plug into the problem to solve. Let's give it a go with this problem. If x is a prime number, then 5x is divisible by 3, odd, negative, prime, or cannot be determined. Okay, let's test the first answer choice by picking some numbers for x. Remember, whatever number we choose for x must be prime. Let's go with 3. Then 5x equals 15, which divides evenly by 3. So this option sometimes works, but that doesn't mean it's true for all prime numbers. What happens if we let x equal 2? Then 5x equals 10. 10 is not divisible by 3, so the first option is sometimes correct, but not always. Next, let's test the second answer choice. Again, 5x could be odd if we choose x equals 3. On the other hand, we already saw that when x equals 2, 5x equals 10. 10 is not odd, so the second answer is not always correct. How about the third answer choice? We know that all prime numbers are positive, so multiplying the value of x by 5 will always give us a number that is positive, not negative. Therefore, answer choice number 3 is not correct. Next, let's look at the fourth answer choice. Anything times 5 is going to have a factor of 5 and won't be prime, so the fourth answer choice is not correct. All we are left with is the fifth choice, cannot be determined. This is the correct answer because the first or second answer choices could be correct if we choose different values for x. Next, let's talk remainders. You probably remember these guys from your days of long division. This remainder is the number left over when dividing a number by another number that isn't one of its factors. Remainders are a part of real-world problems on the test. In real life, we often have too many items to fit into nice groups. Let's take a look at a problem that tests this information. A row of homes is painted in a repeating pattern of blue house, yellow house, blue house, yellow house. What color is the 505th house? Your answer choices are yellow, blue, and the answer cannot be determined from the information given. Well, the pattern has two steps, blue, then yellow. Let's see how many times it repeats in the line of 505 houses. We'll take 505, our number of houses, divided by 2, our number of steps. We divide 50 by 25 because 2 times 25 is 50. This leaves us with 0, leaving the 5 to be brought down. 2 times 2 is 4, since 2 goes into 5 twice. We'll subtract 4 from 5 to get a remainder of 1. That remainder is the 505th house. Since it only completes one step of the pattern, the first step, that house must be blue, so the second option is correct. Using divisibility and remainders made that one a lot easier. For questions involving divisibility, keep in mind that the important rules of multiples and factors are related to each other. Memorize these rules and apply your knowledge to some quantitative reasoning practice problems.